Are we on? Let's go. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Uru Labs podcast from uh, Bengaluru. Ever complained about how bad our cities are, how bad your commute is? You will get to hear from people who are working to solve these problems in their own way. This is your weekly soapbox for urban sustainability. So do not forget to click like, subscribe and share these videos. And check out the entire podcast library and profiles of the guests on the website podcast.urulabs.com. I am Satya Shankaran with Nirav Kodolikar. This is going to be airing, of course, we are shooting this ahead of time, but it's going to be airing on June 3rd, which is the World Bicycle Day. About uh, five years ago, uh, Lesek Sibylski from Poland, he's a track cyclist. He went to the UN and said, we need to declare a day dedicated to cycling, right? And uh, he got them to dedicate June 3rd uh, every year as the World Bicycle Day. Uh, day to celebrate the role bicycles play in cities and how this humble instrument can uh, be a huge transformative effect towards cities and when people adopt it in large numbers and this is being increasingly seen in many places we've heard stories of the netherlands of course for the last 40 years increasingly like paris during the lockdown started closing down certain streets and it started having a transformative effect on that and huge pickup and brussels which has always been close to the netherlands you'd be surprised but it's been a car country and uh, most recently they have uh, begun to uh, you know become a poster boy for cycling so europe is slowly transforming of course there has been a huge car dependent infrastructure in the us and australia and some of these places for people for most people you you're just kind of writing off these countries literally but uh, they have been doing a lot of emissions as well but the global south africa and india and all these uh, countries are beginning to look at uh, not becoming car dependent look at building cities differently and uh, in that context i have uh, three guests uh, today uh, shilpi sahu tandava popuri and karthik okay. ranganathan they have been uh, commute cyclists if i may call it that they've been cycling to work for quite a while we'll talk about what their uh, journeys have been so welcome to the show guys Tell me about uh, when you literally started commuting to work. I know you might have been on a cycle earlier or not. Uh, so I would like to hear, uh, when did you start, Chilpi? When did you, um, when did you really so, want to do, you know, go to office? You know, why would, why would somebody want to do that? So I started cycling because I wanted to cycle, go to work. So <laughs> uh, before that, I knew how to cycle. I had cycled a bit in college but just for commute i have always used cycle for commute uh, go to tuitions on cycle but i was never very comfortable cycling i have fallen a lot so and i didn't have a cycle when i thought that oh let me try cycling to work because traffic in even 2011 used to be not that great and um, i had very little patience for cycle for getting stuck in traffic and had tried bus which was not very convenient at that time even now it's not um driving was like really unpredictable so i said i will give it a try and i bought a cycle i tried it one uh, on a weekend i cycled around my house some 10 13 kilometers and then i thought that okay let me try going to work now and i just cycled to work um then and it was not very hard i was afraid but it was not very hard i was tired but i was not too tired i was happy i basically cracked it that day <laughs> <laughs> and uh, i i didn't cycle every day i cycled like once twice a week i did that for a few years and then i i mean traffic got worse and i cycled more often and then one day <laughs> i just removed my name from the office cab and said i'm cycling every day to hell with this traffic and i can't sit in a cab anymore so yeah from then onwards if i'm going to work i'm cycling there is no exception it's raining it's uh, windy it's uh, hailstones or it's raining fire cats and dogs it doesn't matter i find out how i can get to work and back on cycle it saves me a lot of time and that's mm. the main reason Thanks, Satya, for hosting us today. 
my journey of cycling is uh, mainly thanks to Bangalore. Uh, basically, I live in a place called Marathalli where all the traffic stops. Uh, I have a small flyover next to my house. Just to cross that, it used to take 20 minutes to half an hour to stop. Even on bike, it used to take more than an hour. Car, it used to take almost two hours. And this is basically to commute a distance of 10 kilometers from my place to my workplace. And one day I was sitting and I said, even if I walk, I might reach faster than two hours. What other alternates I have? That was the main motivation. And I really owe Bangalore, uh, all my cycling journey to Bangalore traffic. Uh, this is basically, everybody says, all these are challenges and all the pain points. I somehow, uh, based on how I got habituated to convert challenges into opportunities, uh, it's for last 12 years I'm cycling to work and I never had to look back after that. I have some stories to talk about. What are the biggest inhibitions and stuff? Uh, even when I st want to start cycling, I sat on that for almost a year. Whether if I buy a cycle, will I use for two days? Will I use for a year? And I just sat on that decision for almost a year. The way you said, I have a small flyover next to my house. It's almost like I have an attached bathroom <laughs> in my bedroom. <laughs> So everybody seems to have a favorite flyover next to that. What about you, Karthik? I don't have a favorite flyover, you... thankfully. But uh... <laughs> uh, thank you but like... for inviting us, uh, Satya. Pleasure to be here. Uh, I mean, uh, like you said, right? I mean, I mean, my cycling journey started early. I mean, childhood when we would all, right? So clearly remember the rental cycle for, I mean, one hour, like one rupee per hour and that was super popular so that is where i learned my cycling at bsa champ and all that so rode all the way till 12 standard college four years it went away thankfully i picked it up when i started doing my masters and even well when i started working in um, uh, in dallas i had a cycle but there it, it was very limited and like you had mentioned about uh, the us not really being a very convenient place for cycling i had pretty much kept it away but then I brought it back with me. Uh, but what really triggered triggered the commute was, I think it, it was probably my second week in my office here in Bangalore, hmm. where my supervisor, uh, uh, I mean, while he was introducing me to the rest of the team. So when he stopped by one guy, he said, see, this guy is weird. I was like, why? Well, that's because he comes to work by cycle. I was like, oh, wow. People commute to work by cycle here. And I was like, I have a cycle sitting at home. Why, why can't I use it? And that really was what, yeah. So to quote, uh, to quote Shilpi, that is when I cracked it. And most coincidentally, uh, I mean, it was 2011, right? So it looks like all three of us started around that time. So since then, it's, Same time. it's been blissful riding for 12 years. I think I was one year late. 2012 was when I started. Just missed you guys by an year. <laughs> no, but even before we get to that, I just wanted to point out to the viewers uh, watching and um, listening in. All three guests that we have today have tried different modes of transport to their workplace and found that cycling is the fastest and the most, I mean, convenient as well. Even though, yes, they have their own experience of how they got onto the cycle, I just wanted to point it out because I found it very interesting. I just want to play devil's advocate and just really ask you guys questions that I often get asked. And this is from someone who just commuted to work uh, very infrequently, but has commuted to work during uh, an internship of mine. But I'm going to take the stance and ask you guys that, hey, our roads are really unsafe. I don't want to go out and cycle to my work because what if something happens to me? It's not, it's not really safe. I want the government to do something. Give me a bike path. I'll get out. So maybe we could start with Shilpi and what would you say to someone who would, I mean, who has that question or who has that stance? Um, I get that question very often and I ask them, do you think the roads are good for driving? The roads are not half decent for anything uh -huh. and you still take four wheels out. I'm just taking two wheels out. Doesn't having just two wheels and just uh, you on the two wheels make it even more unsafe? So you're more exposed, but you're far slower. So you are not a threat to anybody and you can reduce the threat to yourself by being slow, uh, being predictable and being visible at night. So a lot of cycle accidents actually happen on uh, highways and during hours when you're not visible to the other person. So you cannot do much about the other person being rash. But actually, I would say that in Bangalore, what I see is that people are slow because roads are like that. 
and secondly there would be rash people but there will be a very small percentage of people who can actually drive rash on such horrible roads mm. uh, and you can't do anything about them and there there will be such people everywhere but what you can do to save yourself is just being predictable and yeah you can put yourself in a metal box but that will not take you anywhere it's a compromise but yeah. i i choose a compromise i choose an option where i have more chance to see the positives than the negatives and i feel there are more positives being on the cycle even if the government has done absolutely nothing to encourage it so to tandav and karthik i have a question which is did you have this debate internally before getting on to the cycle and maybe after tandav and karthik even shilpi you could elaborate on if you had this internal discussion with yourself not with myself but i have uh, my spouse uh, initially when okay. i started cycling I, i live in an apartment complex where if i go on the perimeter it comes a 1 km ride and my office is 10 km as i said when i started going to my office my wife came pretty strong you want to do 10 rounds here in the complex please do it but it's very <laughs> unsafe i'll not allow you onto the road and uh, not only her when i first started cycling on the road uh, uh, i was taken back at the speed at which people go uh, but after a couple of days i was very comfortable and i was assuring my wife it's much safer because i don't use the main highway uh, from the first month onwards or the first second week onwards i was using these internal roads i was taking one of those routes uh, where it's much more safer uh, much more uh, predictable even with the traffic without traffic uh, my cycle commute time like my work commute time is predictable and constant plus or minus 5 minutes and that i say is a big blessings in bangalore if you can get a predictable commute time that's first thing second thing i work in a tech park uh, where by cycling i also cut down i, I get an uh, privilege to get a back uh, door access there are two uh, two entries for this particular tech park one is the main one everybody is expected to come any community using motorbikes or cars they are only uh, allowed for entry from the main gate and from the back gate the cyclists and the pedestrians uh, get access and basically i cut down by 2 kilometers and it also helps me to save and my office being on the corner very close to the back gate so basically i'm a lazy guy and i'm trying to figure out better ways <laughs> to go and reach so this is how i was able to crack and uh, i never had to look back and awesome. uh, just to answer uh, some of my colleagues thought even after 6 7 years cycling when i bought my new car audi people thought i'll dump the cycling i'll go back to car because i got a fancy car uh, believe me i'm very comfortable in cycling to work predictable every time rather than taking this expensive car and get stuck in traffic and get irritated get frustrated so that's my journey of cycle to work i mean uh, so when i when i started to commute my house was around like 6 kilometers one way right uh, i mean i honestly didn't have much of a i mean uh, much of a, a doubt or a mental barrier because i mean I, actually that was when i mean just before the i had moved moved from the us right so i did have a i mean bit of a shock right when i tried getting back on the road right but then i mean i had started motorcycling anyway so i and i mean cycle felt completely natural so didn't really right i mean didn't have any concern going from right from a motorcycle to a cycle and uh, i mean a lot of these points right the predictability was was fantastic right so whatever time of the day right so whether the traffic is moving or not there is always space for you to walk your cycle on the pavement right so so you never get caught in traffic you uh, i mean so that was a huge plus point for me and somewhere down my first year uh, i mean where i still used to probably uh, like do half and half right there was one point uh, i mean when my family had gone out of town and where i kind of took it upon uh, like as a challenge to myself let me see if i can use my cycle anywhere and everywhere this one month now that i don't have to take anybody along so that one month really uh, i mean cleanse the deal and that pretty much every single day i've been cycling almost uh, so it's it's not much you don't really have too many uh, i mean and because my current commute is just 2 and 1/2 kilometers so it i mean there's really no excuse not to cycle and 
I mean, come rain or shine, you can pretty much get home soon. Uh, yeah, it's not really that that complicated for me. I feel one other thing that got, I'm a lazy person, as I said, by cycling to work, I got half an hour workout uh, going to office, and also another half an hour coming to work. So that's a big advantage for me because otherwise I was not able to carve out that one hour uh, workout for me. And second thing, initial days. When it rains, I used to uh, not cycle. I used to pick a car or a motorbike. A motorbike or cycle are both the same, but if you're picking a car, Bangalore, uh, yeah, thanks to Bangalore again. When it rains, even a small rain, I don't know what happens. Suddenly, a lot of traffic jams happen. There was a day where I parked my car in the office. I was trying to reach from my office to home, uh, even after circling for two or three hours, basically. Uh, tree branches used to fall and a lot of traffic jams, all that stuff. Then I thought, even if it rains, I want to cycle. And I carry a rain uh, raincoat as well as those uh, cover for the laptop. I never had to look back. Because even when it rains, people, uh, initial days, I used to hesitate. And what I figured out is, when it rains, you get uh, stuck more in traffic in Bangalore compared to when it doesn't rain. And I thought, it rains, you better remember that you need to cycle, not to take a car. So, that's my trick on that. What people consider as excuses or adversities is something that we have turned into an advantage. Predictability, what Tandav and uh, Karthik said was very interesting. Always only f- three to four minutes this side or that side. Whereas in the car, it could be anywhere between 30 minutes on this side to two and a half hours on the other <laughs> side. That's an amazing. People don't realize that until they actually get on it. And to uh, Shilpi's point, I I think Tandava's point was uh, uh, about using these back roads. I discovered so many back roads, not necessarily back roads, but they were roads through layouts, you know, especially in areas like Jayanagar, where you could just do this, 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 and then get out. I could do that in Indranagar like this, like this, like this, and get out. Lots of places where if you discover the the smaller roads, you can actually kind of... uh, uh, get by faster these are things that people don't realize everybody looks at because you drive on the main road you think you will also have to cycle on the main road all the way yes of course in some places you have to because there are too many dead ends in some of these areas in some of the but if you ever discover and plan your route they're saying it's just amazing every thing that you actually feel is a, uh, is an excuse is now all gone because you've turned it in the rain thing is amazing right when you have the trees fallen you can quickly identify and then walk walk across those trees you can literally go and walk over the fallen trees and go none of your cars can walk over those things yeah mm-hmm. i mean you're just uh, dead in the water some of the other excuses i thought uh, p- people uh, come up with is the weather right okay rain is one they say it is too hot to cycle of course yes in some places there might be right you go to uh, but the the question of choosing the bicycle and it this is like going back uh, when we didn't have the motor vehicle, a lot of people did cycle, right? What about the weather then? Didn't we adjust the time then? Of course, you had more trees. Why, why can't you get those now? Uh, those are some of the questions I always uh, thought about. What What are some of the favorite excuses you have heard? May, may not be an excuse, but these are the bottlenecks I faced. And I know that a lot of first-timers who want to start, though there is an intent, but there are some practical things that people will struggle to. Like mm. I was... Talking about, I was sitting on trying to make a decision on which bike to buy and if I commute or not, whether I will be comfortable or not. Uh, Initially, after I started uh, commuting to work, I was loaning my cycle. Uh, There were days when I'm traveling on, when I'm on vacation, I'm traveling somewhere. I was loaning my cycle to folks who are seriously interested. And I said, hey, can you take my cycle? And if, if you're seriously interested, you experiment those couple of days and then try and figure out and then you can go and do. Basically, what helps uh, that is basically it will help them to make a uh, decision making with a lot more conviction. I, I used to rotate. I used to say, okay, this is my vacation plan. Who wants these two days? Who want these and type of stuff? Uh, that definitely helped. There are a lot of folks who picked up cycling with that. And other thing I also saw is, okay, this is also my example of, uh, I was I live in a co- community, a big community. Uh, one time I saw somebody was sending a note for carpool. Hey, uh, I stay here. I go to the same tech park where uh, uh, he and me are working. Hey, anybody interested to carpool? I just took a liberty to send him a message. Hey, not about carpool, but if you're interested in cycling, I'll give you the company. 
he said yeah i'm interested though i don't have a cycle so i loaned him one cycle of mine uh, which i'm not using and we actually we commuted together from my place to uh, the workplace and his office is probably two uh, buildings away from my place and he really liked it and he commuted at least a week with me he got comfortable he said he'll go and explore and buy only problem is he doesn't have a shower room in his office maybe i'll come back to that yeah do, do talk about that because that's one of the things right so the body types are different for different people some people sweat a lot uh, we shouldn't discount the fact that uh, some people are not fit enough uh, that they feel winded very quickly of course that's something you need to work on right i mean it's not uh, but this budding system is interesting have any of you tried i uh, kartik is that something that you guys have tried out at your office what uh, uh, showers those kind of things are also an issue right i mean how much of an issue is it shower is is definitely a, uh, i mean i have heard that being mentioned a lot however i mean our office does have showers right so uh, i mean uh, so that is not a i mean that is not a deal breaker we have tried out uh, i mean reasonably successfully with budding people up there are people uh, who have started cycling and kept at it successfully after uh, after uh, i mean uh, having overcome their jitters by budding up with people but one i mean one big reluctance that i have seen is that uh, the perception that cycles are too expensive and that it is uh, it's a very elite thing to get into right that it costs a whole lot to to cycle for commute or recreation and that is the uh, i mean yeah that's very common objection that i hear my my standard answer has i mean has typically been how much do you spend on your phone can you spend the same amount on a cycle and you will have one that lasts like five times the lifetime of your phone some have taken up but not many do but uh, yeah I, I have an example to share okay of course uh, as i said i go through these localities uh, in those residential areas when i commute to work i used to bump into a, a colleague of mine who i always used to find waiting at a place to take an auto 2 kilometers from the office he's also a runner he always waits there at a place uh, when i try to reach to my office typically used to wait for an auto and i've seen multiple times then one day I, i picked up and i said hey do you know the amount you spend on paying auto uh, to go to work and to come back to this 2 kilometers if you buy a cycle probably it pays off in a year at the maximum in two and he was thinking about it and his dad sponsored him a cycle and he thanked me now he's not uh, in the same company but he moved to a different place but he always says tandava thank you for giving me that uh, not only he saved money on auto but his uh, uh, commute is predictable he he used to reach from his place to office in less than 10 minutes or 5 minutes whereas for auto it uh, he basically at the mercy of an auto guy to pick and drop all that stuff so that way uh, probably if people pay attention uh, these small things basically it gets uh, even out the amount you spend on buying a cycle uh even if you forget about even phone or stuff the amount we spend on a fuel or an auto or a commute expense uh, you will get your cycle uh, not less uh, like within 2 years you will recover the entire amount is there a women cycle to this shilpi are they differently thinking about this or so uh, in my company there are not too many women who cycle uh, it's probably some young women who do i i don't know who does right now you know there are a couple not in my building i i see that yeah they in general women have more resistance to the idea of cycling they probably don't feel safe on the cycle because they feel more exposed like in a car you are less exposed so i i can't really speak about them but what i think myself is that i did never even thought about it even once uh i think that the biggest problems that a cyclist has in bangalore is potholes bad roads zero maintenance and you need to be careful that you are not stepping into a drain or driving over a pothole you know sit lying on the road on which you can skid or an unmarked speed breaker that you can't see at night uh, not being visible somebody passing by uh, very close because they can't see you so i think that those were those are the real challenges and i really don't remember feeling harassed or anything but at the same time i i mean i would not say that that's not something other women uh, face 
and typically i maintain my commute in a crowded area and i don't don't commute much at night but not because i feel unsafe but because you know night people are even worse riders they they don't uh, drive properly the roads are not lit uh, the part of bangalore i stay in is uh, is like the wild wild west of uh, of bangalore <laughs> nothing really works here yeah if you're cycling you're on your own if you're driving on your own you can get harassed either way but uh, as a woman i really didn't feel that way but also because i'm always commuting on in very predictable work hours like day time so satya i have seen couple of women team members uh, in my workplace and in fact uh, one person lakshmi she is my role model because the reason i say is now uh, she picked up cycling after she said she got inspired when i started cycling to work but she lost lot more weight and she become lot more uh, fitter uh, what she said is she went back to her college dresses which she was not able to wear in the last 10 years and that inspired me a lot and i also find another roman rider coming uh, probably farther from my my place like another 6 kilometers from my place she was commuting to work and i happened to bump her in one of those uh, exits of out of office and i was checking with her then she said she takes the main roads then i showed her this uh, road which is much safer and much more comfortable and uh, she was thanking me for that i have seen uh, women riders doing that and probably they know gender bias but when women decides to do something they do much wonderful uh, than other gender because lakshmi inspired me that even that one or two years she did uh, okay she is no longer with our company but she moved into a different role in another place but she inspired uh, not only me but lot more others that if you actually take this in an appropriate way you can do wonders i actually don't disagree with that that statement at all i can see that you still not fitting into your college clothes so you should you have lot more work to do than uh, <laughs> yes <laughs> that just brings me back to this whole uh, company thing right so while we are all getting out there we see the advantages of course a lot of them don't see it and which is what we are trying to do by sharing our stories and trying to tell them it's far more simpler from an individual choice basis try it out and there are certain things that you need to consider like suddenly don't if you're living 20 kilometers away don't start tomorrow and start doing 20 kilometer uh, work rides right so start doing something smaller first and get used to it get a handle on your bicycle don't buy an outsized bicycle then you are not controlling the bicycle the bicycle is controlling you so typically like any other instrument you should learn how to use it get a handle on it learn to control it and then you know kind of increase your mileage or whatever with so many people riding to work you all of us have uh, looked at uh, fellow uh, riders who ride to work and as a part of all of the cycle to work stuff that we've been doing and all more and otherwise we have seen that it has been picking up from our personal experiences as well are the companies really stepping forward we do it because we like it and we want to do it and of course when you need to scale these numbers in in a country like ours where the aspirational goal is to buy a motor vehicle we can rain on that parade as well <laughs> and the car parade but there is a huge aspirational goal towards saying no i am i have arrived only when i come in a car to the office right that's one of these mindsets and trying to get more more people to cycle also requires we'll come to the government side of things because we know the gaps there but the corporates what are their roles how have what are the stories you have heard personally i have heard that some of the corporates are really forthcoming in encouraging uh, uh, these kind of things and some others aren't right i i've heard stories on either side and some of you have been beneficiaries of uh, uh, good corporates who have helped you and others who haven't uh, what do you think they should do minimally in your opinion in general what should companies be doing for their employees to encourage more people to commute to work what do you think i personally think uh, maybe i am privileged to be uh, working at a place where uh, it's one of the great places to work for last many years ba- basically the reason i say is i'm privileged this because we get this uh, uh, shower rooms uh, in the gym and on all the other floors once we started more cyclists coming to the place we also have a cycle stand uh, these two are the bare minimum stuff where we can safely lock our cycle as well as uh, taking shower the reason i say we are privileged is uh, yesterday i met one gentleman he said he was cycling to work but there no shower rooms and he 
got itchings and back aches and stuff and he stopped cycling to work things like that so these are bare minimum where uh, corporates can do even if they don't provide any incentives of helping new employees to explore cycling options like hey you can choose between these two or three or maybe there's a company who facilitates give you some discount type of stuff but these are the entry bare minimum stuff what i'm saying i think at least my company i feel that it's somewhat on the neutral side but if there are more people employees asking for some facilities there is there is serious thought provided to that so i feel is that if you want to want more people to cycle so you get them on the cycle and then ask for the facilities uh, and there was a time when i was probably one of the only people cycling and i wanted a place where i could change uh, not even shower just change and there was that time the company was uh, leasing uh, a space so they did not have that and they provided me a wooden cupboard to get inside and change <laughs> but yeah they they thought of you know they thought of some option and they could they may not have done better at that point uh, but yeah i was i was happy that they were at least thought about it okay this is where a woman can get in and change peacefully because there is really no other option uh, but now i mean there are cycle stands there are showers uh, there are also anti skid surfaces because there was one time i skid and fell and then i then of course the security guy kept telling me madam you didn't apply brakes properly or something i said no i've been cycling for donkey's years it's not my fault so then i checked with the cyclist or the cyclist group that hey there is this uh, slope Uh, at the entrance of the office does did anybody face this issue of slipping and everybody said yes yes i did why didn't you do anything about it so i raised a complaint and it got fixed there are anti skid surfaces now now every time i go over it i'm very careful because i don't know if some day it starts skidding again but i have fallen there very badly and now i don't i mean it's okay now so i raised a complaint it got fixed it took some time to get fixed so every time you have an issue you don't just keep quiet about it you ask for the resolution so i do that to i i mean i put to ask the same from my government as well but i know that the company is much more receptive to the employees demand so if you ask if you crib and crib about car parking you get it not a bit i mean there there is limited option there but if you ask for cycle parking they they'll be happy to give you some because it doesn't cost much in a place where you can park three cars you can park you know 40 bicycles um we have asked for facilities for cyclists and we have got it because we don't ask for much our demands are pretty limited and the company has realized that these cyclists ask for very small things just give it to them we are small footprint people i've been lucky enough uh... i mean that we had a very robust cycling network for quite a while i remember uh, even uh, i mean even like a decade back probably 2013 was when we got our first covered cycle parking stand which could accommodate close to 60 or so right um, i mean 60 65 or so and uh, and for the last couple of years we been overflowing it by like a huge margin that last year i mean or probably earlier this year i think we now uh, we now have a have a second covered parking stand with pretty much the same size as before so we uh, i mean uh, that's really made things a whole lot better and we've always had showers we've had um, uh, we've had an annual cycle to work day which has been there for more than like 15 years where all employees are encouraged to come by cycle that one day and uh, there are uh, there are some perks offered uh, like free breakfast sometimes or uh, like free breakfast always nice uh, probably like some t-shirt we do a ride around the tech park um uh, well we even uh, we even conducted slow cycling races like if some of you have <laughs> taken part in your childhood <laughs> that you really can't go fast so you might as well try to go as slow as possible so we've done that to kind of introduce a fun element to it uh uh yeah so and we even had uh, like some challenges within the company though this was uh, well this was more pre covid right like, uh, challenges within the company to see right within a quarter which is the business which uh, right which has the most rides which uh, has the most riders right the 
if the person with the most rights gets uh, gets facility uh, i mean felicitated uh, right in a uh, right so in a quarterly event and all that right so in that sense the uh, i mean the culture of promoting cycling has been there for quite a while so we've only been ma- i mean we've only managed to take it take it to the next level through uh, right participation in the cycle to work program i guess when it comes from the employee side the company is willing to just let it go like yeah you guys are doing something it's uh, we'll just kind of help you out and things like that uh, i from the outside when i look at it some of the things that i've heard uh, around is that the hr is really afraid of telling people to cycle what if these people die it's unsafe on the roads and things like that what do you guys think companies or corporates can do collectively to address inside the campus all the facilities is good right but all of the problems are outside the campus you all the companies that i know of not all i mean many companies that i know of with, who are in large campuses and uh, big facilities have taken care to help their employees and which is which is all they need to do predominantly but how can they how do you think they can step up and peak for your safety outside the compound wall what do you think at least i know that there are a lot of companies came together on the outer ring road uh, of mm. uh, bangalore uh, this is from kerpuram to probably silk uh, not silk board but maybe to sarjapur road i think there is a consortium mm. of companies uh, mm. i don't know sachcha if you remember uh, before the metro mm. work started there was this beautiful cycle lanes that were there a uh, lot of including my kids where we were not comfortable in uh, sending them on to the outer ring road they used those cycle lanes to go from marathalli to hsr layout without any parental guidance they just stick to the cycle lanes they were able to comfortably go and if kids can go i am sure that all the employees can leverage the same uh, the reason i am bringing this is because this consortium of companies work with the government to speed up these uh, metro works to everything they can also go and influence to go and create this safe cycle lanes uh, from those metro stations as and when they come up uh, to connect the last mile connectivity i know a lot of my colleagues who complain uh, when they use metro they are not worried of using metro they are a lot more happier but the thing that irritated them is the last mile connectivity probably companies can influence uh, we all can leverage more of metro or more of public transport and use this cycle uh, to the last mile connectivity cycle or maybe the ulu e cycles to everything to probably make it easier and i think that way the companies are also comfortable that uh, hey all their employees on the road are much safer uh, i know at the place where i work at the company says uh, the parking and the facilities what the company uh, it takes responsibility for once we step out of it it's on our own not that many companies say but uh, if they have a way they would like to uh, contribute in ensuring not only the cyclists but all the employees on the roads are safe if they have a way. Yeah. no but they don't right uh, you just said it that that was the point i was trying to bring across the roads are bad they all come out the associations come out and say hey the roads are bad let's fix this uh, we need more roadways and the companies literally lend voice through their associations Com- uh, company ceo start speaking out saying the roads are bad and all of those things. but i have never seen even one of them even if they do a lot for the employees they don't come out and say we need good cycling and walking in first the leaders may not be commuting when they pick up probably you'll hear more of those uh, okay we need point. to walk the talk <laughs> probably as leaders if we start doing then all these things will also come from the company's mouth to everywhere else so so satya actually if you see that it is still the driving is still aspirational to most people and uh, when they get a job they buy a scooter then they buy a motorcycle and then the ultimate thing they will buy a car and that's about it uh they most people don't want to buy a cycle they think it's demeaning to be seen on the cycle and that's the mentality most of them are coming from smaller towns or they have been brought up with that thinking in their mind so it's it's that thinking will take some time to change and um, and we have to face it that we are actually the three of us are probably a minuscule fraction of the people who proudly cycle not really i mean exercise is not the primary goal 
for which we cycle. Passion is not the primary goal for which we cycle. We cycle because we found that it's the best option. And we are a minuscule fraction of those people. So 95% of the people would drive a car or they would come by uh, the company cab. They would not walk. They would not cycle. They just dislike the idea of doing that like a common man because we belong to that IT sector where it's seen as the face of prosperity and prosperous people do not cycle. Or in, on the other end, current generation. Uh, prosperous people are the ones who want cycle lanes because mm. the the maids and the security guards who are cycling by, they are not asking for it. Why are you guys asking for it? Mm. The simple reason we are asking for it that it just makes it safer so that more people can cycle. They don't have to be daredevils to be out on the cycle. So, yeah, company is afraid at some point, but also they feel like it's 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 something that just doesn't look right. To, doesn't look right. It just doesn't look right. It, why should I ask somebody to come on cycle? It's just not worthy of uh, promoting. But how do you explain then them coming out and complaining against the road space? I need more road space. My employees cannot come to work. They never fight for yours cycle lane on the same they, they they want more road space because that's what they think the more road space meaning more space for the cars less uh, there'd be less traffic jams if there are wider roads but somewhere there is a bit of an ignorance that that is there that every city with wide highways and wide roads have not solved their traffic problems they have only made them bigger so, yeah, the big big cities have big traffic jams. Wider roads have wider traffic jams. And that's the truth. Somewhere the that truth has not come out. People have not accepted it yet. That wider roads is not going to help reduce the traffic. Because our companies never suggest us, hey, you come in car, you come in motorcycle, you come in uh, scooter or walk or cycle. It's each individual mm. we do. And basically where I'm differing is, we know that Bangalore has a constraint of the roads. These are the roads that we have. We don't have like uh, NCR, like Delhi, wider roads and stuff. This is a limited stuff what we have. Uh, like I say, every challenge is an opportunity. With the limitation of these uh, narrow roads or these smaller roads, uh, how do we go and uh, help our uh, colleagues to come to office in a much more predictable and safer and commute, uh, predictable way? Like if outer ring road is... Uh, choked with all the traffic how do we help all our colleagues to come to office because the roads are not going to expand what do we do probably we'll get a metro lane probably we'll get a railway suburban railway but the roads are not going to any further expand than what it is there on the outer ring road from care Purim to silver how do you utilize that space work. to reach people? Gonna, the people are willing to multi-layer it and see they also see challenges and opportunity to get more road space uh, that, but I agree with your point. Uh, the, 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 but the point going back to what Shilpi is saying is, I would like your views on that as well. Uh, it's not just the CEOs, Tandwa, you said the CEOs are not seeing this. They are not maybe cycle, right? It's not just that. She told me the aspirational goal, right? I've heard senior IAS officers say, hey, I come from a village uh, and I want to see... Uh, People, I mean, he's just trying to mimic somebody else's aspirational goal and they probably wanted to see what the reaction will be. He said, we, I come to a city to prosper and ride a huge car as if that was the end goal of everything else, right? So that's how they think, right? That's how most people think and she's perfectly right. There is an attitudinal shift. Is it because CEOs don't cycle? Is it because they also think like a normal person that aspirational goals is getting my employees to I come mean, in a car? It's probably not just the leaders here, right? I strongly feel that whatever is the preferred commute by the majority company's employees, that will definitely be promoted more and more by the company, right? Uh, I mean, we cannot deny that, like Shilpi said, we are like probably not even 10% of our, uh, our company's workforce, right? The people who cycle. I mean, until these numbers really scale up, I don't see them going out and putting themselves out there demanding better infrastructure for their employees. I mean, this is really small. And one more thing to account for is that the fact is, despite pretty much most of the support staff in a company cycling, most support staff are probably not employees of that company also, right? So they are 
I mean, so it's very, very rare for you to find a company work for better infrastructure for those who don't really work for them also. They're not the face of, the, of that company. So unless you have more cyclists going out uh, who are demanding it, uh, uh, I mean, from their companies, it is probably not going to happen. The one thing which I do believe could tilt the balance is that now we do have more and more requirements on companies needing to be green, right? The question mm -hmm. of the carbon emission, right? So that that I think is something which companies haven't quite realized, right? What a difference it, like it makes if you have like 150 employees coming in by cycles instead of cars, right? Cars or um, uh, right um, uh, motorcycles for that matter. So those are things which I mean, which I think will start getting factored in more. And that might just slowly start nudging their needle towards, um, uh, I mean, uh, putting themselves out there and, uh, I mean, uh, making use of those associations better. Right? Like Tandava said, I've never seen any of the, the company association say anything about cycling. So hopefully this might, uh, we might start seeing more. I also see the current campuses who join us. They don't have this baggage of, I need to own a car. I don't see them caring. And I've seen some of them coming and talking to me to figure out, hey, I want, I'm interested in cycling. What do you recommend? What are the best options? And probably if companies can facilitate something about these campuses who come and join the workforce, because uh, they think different. They're definitely, uh, unlike our generation, uh, they are a lot more grounded. Uh, they know what it is. Okay. They might have their aspirations different, but they understand what it is. If companies can facilitate and at least protect them with what, how you facilitate to get them to leverage some of these other modes of transport. Because a lot of them don't believe in owning an expensive car or owning a car because they know that from financial perspective, it doesn't make any sense. These are the depreciating assets. So probably as we and some of the companies can carve out some schemes around and facilitate some of that, Probably we can increase this footprint. But is that, is that, that's an interesting point. Do you really, I don't want to generalize, but I do see that a different generation, maybe it's the, our generation and the previous one who are completely hooked on to this aspirational thing. Did, have you noticed that some of, some of the people in the younger generation, I can, I can see Nirav already doesn't care about owning too many of these things. You may have it for very reason. Yeah. I have, I have heard my own kids don't even bother. Uh, they just. They would much rather hail an auto or walk it to wherever they want to go or, or take the bicycle than actually even he, 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 there is no interest to even get a driving license uh, when they turn 16. It almost seems to me that there are so many choices, just providing a choice. But again, coming back to corporates, uh, what let's let's try and paint some picture of what you think they can do um, before we go and start. Just one the thing that I wanted to add here, Satya, sorry, uh, before you jump on, right? I want to play the devil's advocate here and uh, basically say that I, and from what I've seen for the last 10, 12 years in office, people who join youngsters typically tend to cycle, right? They are new to Bangalore. They live close by, right? So, mm. so a lot of employees in their first five years typically tend to cycle and then it starts to change once they start buying. Uh, I mean, I have personally seen several who have, gone from being commute cyclists to car riders uh, uh, who now come by car, right? Or at least motorcycles because they would have gotten married. So, or they probably need to drop a child in school and come. So basically all sorts of things start to change. So youngsters don't stay young forever. So they don't remain cyclists forever. <laughs> so that's how, that's what I've seen. But if you cycle, you stay young forever. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> probably their spouses might influence them. Be safe. Because now I'm also dependent on you. So, sorry. Yeah. So, the risk assessment changes. They start yeah. thinking it is riskier suddenly, even though they have been at no risk for a while. Is there a quick one last thing on the thing? Is there a culture in companies that, that influences people? I don't know how you like. Are some companies and the way they speak and behave and symbolisms in their companies, does that influence? If you see a lot, I've seen people in university campuses, they don't think twice about, of course, there might be a cost issue and all of those things, right? But even otherwise, there are some companies where people have come and told me, I never, we never uh, aspired for this because probably nobody wants to show off there. Is there a cultural element to certain companies behaving and their employees behaving a certain way? 
I completely agree. When I started cycling to work in 2011, uh, I have one cycle rack space where we can park our cycles, like five cycles. Slowly, people picked up, and then more cyclists, and then more cyclists. Uh, now we got up to 12 racks before pre-COVID. Like it's almost like we went from uh, less than five members to 50 plus members, and most more folks come and more folks go and adapt. And it's not a taboo. And as I said. Uh, even after you get an expensive car and if you don't come in that and you are cycling, uh, probably people understand and then it becomes a culture of the company or cul culture of the group where you are part of. So, so leadership does play a role, definitely. Correct. Because if they are talking about, oh, you know, greed is good, then go around and throw the riches and show flashy stuff, it, it might really influence. I, that's just an anecdotal thing. I have no data to back it up though. Uh, I've, I've heard of that. I've seen some of the people from some people don't even realize that cycling is even a thing and nobody has done it there. And they haven't yeah, yeah, actually right? I, I feel that the leaders need to set an example. They need to walk the talk without that. You will not have youngsters following, uh, they might cycle while they can and, uh, while they cannot afford anything. Uh, costlier uh, but if they see that that your boss is coming on cycle and is casual about it mm. then most people will think that oh that's a normal thing to do right, right now the most normal thing to do is to buy a gigantic size SUV and travel alone in it or maybe even better get a driver to get drive a driver. <laughs> and that's the example most people are setting and that's the that's the thing that most people aspire to unfortunately i mean that is true nobody is aspiring to ride a cycle they think that oh that person is riding a cycle either that person is very poor or is completely crazy so yeah Absolutely. all three of us would yeah. fall in that crazy bucket <laughs> because they don't understand that we are doing it for a reason which is just Selfish. about saving yeah, time yeah we just get, yeah we get we get benefits out of it so we're doing it Hmm. I'm surprised they don't see the benefits and they start uh, attaching more risk to it than they actually. Yeah. Uh, so, so the kind of reasons I get for uh, me cycling to work is that uh, I can eat anything. I can stay slim. I can get a lot of exercise and uh, I must love cycling. <laughs> These are the reasons, which none of them are true. <laughs> yeah. The reason is I get more done by cycling yes. and not spending time in traffic. And I, I cycle on a, the most infamous road in Bangalore. So I, I don't take any side routes or anything because I just want the shortest way out of that, this hell on the roads. So I love passing by Mercedes, BMWs and Skodas. I just, I'm extremely non-aggressive person. I just pass by and that's the way I show it to them. Well, yeah, you don't even have to flip anything. You can just go past well, it. Sometimes, it uh, speaks for I mean, sometimes, uh, I mean, uh, Shilpi's cartoons don't quite convey that, but then uh, <laughs> there is a lot of a lot of anger there. There is a lot of angst that comes through. But then, yeah, so for those of you who don't know, Shilpi is a wonderful cartoonist. And uh, I mean, her mm -hmm. Twitter handle would break fails, right? Where... Uh, Right. Break, break fail 22 and we have already yeah. covered it okay it's, okay it's it's fantastic yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so i'll i'll link yeah. the overlaps episode uh, of hers to this uh, uh, this particular episode so that they get to see that and they get to follow and see how she expresses all of these things no the anger does come out you can mm -hmm. see it but it comes out very creatively so you need to look between <laughs> the pictures so you can see it uh so, the last uh, all, all these years of uh cycling on the road commuting on the road gave me one insight when people honk initially i used to get irritated hey i'm on the side corner and you're still honking what i later realized i thought of sharing it here basically uh, any of you start cycling and if you see people honking it's not because of anything else that you have done something wrong it's basically their frustration that they got stuck at the previous junction <laughs> and you're able to pass through them and once they're crossing sometimes they it's basically they're trying to challenge themselves and uh, yeah, they might be having their uh, fight inside themselves, say, why am I not cycling type of stuff. So they don't know how to express. So they take that frustration on the home. Um, so just as 
if you realize that you'll be a lot more comfortable you don't get irritated just uh, keep this perspective in mind this is my thought yeah. all right with that tip we move to blaming the government <laughs> now that's that's the last part of this equation we we've, we've tackled our fears we know what we've done and we know it works let's hope other people realize we've talked about the corporates and what they could do and what they are not doing they have done a lot for yourselves what do you think why how do we get this government to give us something yeah it reinsert really the cycle lanes bicycle lanes on some so of the places not just on that road not just on that road we need we need yeah. uh, so i'll just give you a quick fact at this point in time i i like saying this there are 14000 kilometers of road just in the bbmp region alone which is like 800 square kilometers uh and bbmp you know is not all of bangalore half of bangalore is already outside bbmp but let's talk 14000 kilometers of roads right that's that's the network for cars it might be small it might be big but it is the network for cars at least 2000 kilometers of that is by the way arterial uh, and uh, roads they call them major roads which is 15 meters or wider 2000 is hardly 10% of the uh, 10000 14000 kilometers right Uh, oh no sorry it's around 20% little less than 20% how do we get those fast roads to have bicycle tracks at least 2000 km of bicycle track will help us the rest of the roads don't bother we know how to find those small roads and go we'll still make do with it we we can help ourselves and map these other routes like tandavadas uh, we can do that but i think in the high speed roads at least we need some amount of uh, coverage and at the end of the day it's not about the bicycle lane everybody else should be, we should be planning a car lane only for the cars and everything else should be available for the bicycle right but that's a dream what do you think we should be doing why isn't the government giving it to us i thought it's a chicken and egg problem uh, the reason i say that is there are some lanes where those pedestrian uh, as well as cycle lanes were created from marathalli towards the old airport road till dumlu those are beautiful stuff as and when i stuck in traffic i always commute using the uh, if the roads are not overloaded i normally go on the main road but it's basically chicken and egg uh, the reason i say is government also ask hey, show me i created this how much are you leveraging that probably Correct. we also needs to own but at the same time government can't be uh, blind sighted and say that hey, show me and all because as shilpi said maybe we are talking about this uh, top 1% but there are uh, a uh, lot of folks who use this for regular commute and i know some of them don't even have reflectors and stuff uh, even if you don't care about us but th- all these other folks need a safer passage from their workplace to their home and they're not doing it uh, for leisure or stuff basically it's their necessity to go from their home to workplace and as government case for all of us and probably for the folks who need more help from government than others probably they should go and invest and also it helps back to that uh, what uh, shilpi mentioned of go green if india is talking about being one of the top countries in the world to go on carbon neutral and all that stuff these are the safer passages that can help us to get there much faster as well as helping all these folks who are looking up to us uh, these technology and innovation should help them to the common man and the bottom most person in the society don't build a bridge looking at the number of people swimming across the river because there are people who won't swim who might still want to cross that river there are a bunch of people who like it or not have a different risk perception like kartik was mentioning which i just got a kid and i can't die suddenly your risk perception for no you you haven't died by cycling so long but suddenly you think i have more to lose now so your value of green goes phew, and it's not even about green like shilpi says it's pure utility you can save that time and actually go back and uh, spend more time with your kids infrastructure is not something that we do care about the three of us or four of us or five of us on this call uh, can still cycle because we have figured our way out but if you give it we would be happier and we might ride a little better and little less anxiety because at the end of the day the road is just harassment it's not about safety for us it's about just too many honking too many people shoving no elbow room that's the only thing we are worried about i always say about safety right i mean you guys have heard me we've talked uh, that when the traffic is slower it is actually safer because we are faster than them 
it's it's only when you go out in the morning on the highway and everybody thinks the road is empty and you have a lot of elbow room the motor vehicle is also uh, thinking oh there's a lot of space let me speed and then it's just touch and go at at the same time some amount of infrastructure is absolutely just as a mark of respect one gripe that i had right even when we had those nice nice cycling lanes right where i mean the short lived mm-hmm. cycling lanes we never saw people who violated the cycle lanes get pulled up right so it clearly showed that uh, i mean uh, policing or uh, right making sure people followed those rules was a big problem and i mean whenever that is not being done so, so that clearly showed how much will the government had i mean that to me looked more like something that we'll do that's like a feel good thing but don't expect us to do any more there right um, i mean the government uh, at least the way i saw it they did nothing to normalize cycling they did nothing to even um, uh, to get uh, traffic policemen up to speed with what's happening and uh, right uh, i mean i really wonder how much of a, uh, i mean how much of of training or uh, right sensitization the traffic cops right would have gone through before the cycling lane lanes were introduced there right that really showed in i mean all those times when people would tag people on twitter saying we've had fights right that we've had fights where people would stand and just block the place so considering all of that i mean i do think that uh, i mean the fundamental will is is missing even if we get infrastructure that is probably going to come here and there like uh, right like pieces of i mean bits of charity handed out to us rather than really a fundamental mindset change and when and how we get there i'm actually not i mean i'm a bit of a pessimist right now and it it's probably going to take a lot of effort from all of us and many more people to really get that that mindset change mindset change among the people who decide i think we should have more people using the current infrastructure that we have and trying to get back on the road just purely because there is a lot of value personally for people to get on the bicycle you'll really save time Uh, do it in a structured way find people who cycle and try and see if you can buddy up with them and uh, try and see if we can if you can make a few days count on the bicycle and see how you can make that a habit in the end it is in our personal interest forget about you trying to save the planet or we have all seen that it actually has wonderful personal value for us and i do believe at the end of the day uh, the corporates need to also start lending their voice in some way uh, to make this a momentum uh, that is worth uh, keeping up on that thought uh, i would like to thank you guys all uh, we seem to have lost lost uh, shilpi this world bicycle day let us hope we have more people commuting to work and uh, making this uh, count thanks a lot guys thank you, thank you so much satya thank you satya for the all wonderful right, opportunity so this is a part of the uh, Uh, commute series that we have been doing for the rest of you who are watching do like subscribe and share and see if uh, uh, you can spread the word uh, about the podcast and uh, chime in with your comments on uh, the youtube channel and uh, let's have a conversation going